Action Jackson is asking, he's the Action Jackson is looking for trouble. So he's looking to get us in trouble. So he's asking, what is your opinion on Trump threatening to send illegal immigrants to sanctuary states? He's going to send illegal immigrants to oh, sanctuary states. No, I, this, is this the latest? Did he just do this? Illegal immigrants who are, who are like uh, waiting for their asylum hearing, right? People who've crossed the border and have applied for asylum. And he's going to take them and he's going to take them to sanctuary cities mm -hmm. like San Francisco, Seattle, and he's just going to let them out there. Right. On no, any. No, he said this. He's tweeted this. He's, he's, he said this is what he's going to do. So he's saying, I can't have my preferred immigration policy, which is to just basically close the borders and keep everybody out. That's what a lot of those people want to do. Um, and so because I can't have that, I'm just going to throw a temper tantrum and yeah. not even take the minimum appropriate precautions that we would have if we had a proper moral foreign policy, which, you know, to elaborate on what you said earlier, yes, we have a right to bring people in and hire them and, you know, give them a place to live, invite them in their homes, everything, but not if that person actually poses a threat, some sort of a criminal threat, they're part of an enemy, they're, you know, walking around with Ebola or something. No, and, and so there has to be a proper screening procedure. And he's saying, ah, forget the proper screening. Let's just no, send them all to the sanction. Yeah. No, because well, he's- Well, no, he's saying while, while they're waiting to see whether they- No, for asylum. So that's a different criteria, right? But but asylum also involves background checks and everything else, right? They're, that's why they're they- They're probably need being screened some minute. Let's say, let's assume even that he screened them for infectious diseases and they're not terrorists, but they still haven't had their asylum hearing. Okay, so then he's saying the disproportionate the economic- uh, Let's, let's vote the together. Democrats. Basically, let's take all these people and dump them in it dumped them in uh, the cities that claim they 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 are happy to take in as many illegal immigrants. Now, I'd say a few things about this. One, it is a mockery of the rule of law. There is a process. There's law. There are courts. There is a there's a written law about this. There's supposed to be. Now, the law is bad. Mm -hmm. Granted, the law is bad. The whole idea that anybody who crosses the border, I'm here. I, I'm 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 asking for asylum. Then has to be somehow housed and fed and and until uh, asylum you know why you know the one thing the government could do right now is you know hire hundreds of you know train a bunch of lawyers and hire them to take care of, of this asylum crisis that's happening on the border because what's happening with illegal immigrants now which is different than in the past is in the past they would sneak in and they would go they would go to america they would go to cities they would go to places they would find work now what they're doing is they're crossing the border and they're holding their hands up and they're, they're finding the police and they're saying, we crossed illegally, but we want asylum. Mm -hmm. So please take care of us. And, 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 and we're going to go to the front of a judge. It's because the asylum laws are bad laws. But what Trump is doing, he's throwing out all of this, all of the laws, all the rule of law. And I'm just going to take this out of my political opponents. Of course, if you actually just let all these illegal immigrants free, where would they go? Well, they're all going to go to sanctuary cities because they're going to treat them best over there. So Less likely to get rounded up. Anyway. So what's the big deal out of this? But there is the, the whole crisis at the border is a pseudo crisis. It's a pretend crisis. And the way to solve it is to have comprehensive immigration reform, to, to, to clearly articulate who we are willing to let into the country and who we are not. If you don't like the asylum laws, and I don't like them, I and mean, I know President Trump doesn't like them, then reform them as part of this comprehensive immigration bill. But you haven't even proposed anything. You haven't put anything on the table. Uh, and I mean, the whole, it's, it's just, it's, it's flaunting, it, it really is turning everything into uh, into um, uh, it, it's turning everything into politics, turning everything into Republicans versus Democrats rather than actually issues. And I don't think sanctuary cities are mockery of the law. Sanctuary cities are basically saying we're not going to force a law that we believe is irrational. I mean, who cares? Uh, so I'm sure there were cities in the U.S. that during prohibition 
did not enforce the laws against alcohol. Sanctuary cities for alcohol distribution. Fine. You want to, you want to hear an the interesting- Why is it rational? It, you, 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 you know, not enforcing that law. I wish there were more sanctuary cities for drugs. I think, and if you, if you want to see that play out, what's season three of uh, The Wire? I think it's season three of The Wire, where they create a sanctuary city for drugs. Uh, and, and in a sense, they legalize drugs in the city and, and, and what a beautiful outcome it has. So I, I have no problem with sanctuary cities not, not enforcing particularly laws when the laws are so irrational, so stupid uh, that, that they, you know, that, and, and they're not violating anybody's rights, right? It's not like I'm not enforcing murder. I'm not enforcing the laws against stealing. I, you know, I'm not enforcing, uh, uh, you know, an uh, uh, irrational law that relates to um, that relates to uh, what, how you define a legal immigrant versus a non-legal immigrant. And Penny, the laws are so arbitrary and so irrational. That, that, that he, so he, pro he probably doesn't want the problem solved, right? Because then he can continue to talk about there's this emergency and he's the savior who's going to close the borders and get it all done, regardless of Congress not working with him. He was just tweeting within the last day, I believe, about, you know, Democrats, they have to come and solve the immigration problem. Exactly how? You know, everybody's just punting everywhere. I'm being accused of, I'm being accused of advocating for anarchy. So he's legalizing marijuana on a state level. Is that anarchy? Because it's still illegal federally. So is California, Colorado, all these states that have legalized marijuana. By doing so, have they basically established anarchy? Because they're not enforcing federal law. They, on the contrary, they're, they're snubbing federal law. They're, they're actually saying, we don't give a shit about federal law. We're just going ahead and doing our thing. Um, I'm saying there's certain irrational laws that if certain jurisdictions, you know, the feds can still uh, prosecute, the, pro prosecute those laws, but uh, their jurisdictions, they're not going to enforce. Again, these, none of these laws are rights-violating laws. If, there, if it was a rights-violating law, then absolutely... Uh, you know, sanctuary anything would be wrong. But again, there was, there was a really um, doesn't violate rights. Smoking marijuana doesn't violate rights. Right. Drinking alcohol doesn't violate rights. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it states decide how much of their budget is going to be allocated towards police doing X, Y, or Z. They, you know, they can decide. I'm not going to go and enforce federal laws on immigration using my local uh, local police. Force. There was a really interesting case recently that touches on this immigration issue <laughs> and, and, the, and the tension. Uh, Motel 6, the chain, was told to pay $12 million, I believe, because they handed over their records, their guest records, to ICE. And then basically ICE used those records to find people and, you know, start deportation proceedings and things like this, right? And so think about the implication of this, right? So if they are bad for handing that over, right, then somehow the law is saying that there is some protection for these people who are not necessarily violating anybody's rights. Um, the law is so confused, and I think it's because, like with the area of, of drugs, right? Um, so much of Fourth Amendment stuff comes up because of drug cases and everything. Yeah. If you got rid of drug laws and if you got rid of unjust immigration laws and policies, so much of this would just clean out, and there wouldn't be all this this mess. Um, well, more than that, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have all these des poor, desperate people coming from places like Guatemala and, uh, and El Salvador and, and other places in Central America. To a large extent, the violence that they are escaping is caused by the war on drugs, that we are causing it. We are the reason for it. Our war on drugs and yet our demand for drugs at the same time. So our population demands drugs and then our government launches a war on drugs. That combination is what's creating the violence in, in, uh, in Central America, which is bringing which is bringing this, you know, the, the, these desperate people to our borders. I want to make oh, one yeah. clarification about what I said about uh, sanctuary cities. I didn't say you as an individual have the ability to choose which laws to abide by and which not. Of course, you do. You do do that. I speed 
and I am completely willing to pay the cost for when I speed. Ayn Rand talks about this. So you, you, there are laws you think are irrational and you violate them, assuming they're not laws that violate individual rights. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have that big of a problem with you as long as you recognize the fact that if you're caught, you're going to pay a price for them. So I'm not, I'm not here arguing for individual anarchy. I'm arguing, yeah, you as an individual, I know lots of people. So the example here is gun control laws. I know lots of people who have guns that are not registered or not whatever. Um, and if they're caught, they'll pay the price and they just hope they're not going to get caught. And, but they're going to live by their standards. Okay. But, you know, the other thing is, so I'm not advocating here for individual anarchy. Choose the laws that you want to buy. But though, again, some laws, yeah, I mean, what are the laws that I, if there was prohibition, I would flaunt it, right? As many of you probably smoke dope in places where it's still illegal. Even if you live in a state where it's legal, it's still federally illegal. So what rule do you go by? I don't know. You know, you guys... it's, been, it's been legal in California now for what, a couple of years or something? Yeah, people smoking and dope I, for that as well. I still, I still haven't dragged myself to one of these dispensaries and had any since it's been legal in California. How pathetic is that? That's not pathetic. That's good for you. I mean, what do you need dope I, for? What do you need that well, for? Well, I mean, just, you know, one time, just, okay, it's legal and it should be yeah, legal. It and does that. It... Not interested. Uh, <laughs> so, um, second point is that the rejection of the laws here is by, by state and local governments, state and local governments that are acting within their authority. So, if a city is doing something that is in violation of the American Constitution, then the federal government should sue them. If a state is doing something that goes against federal law to an ex to, and, and violating the Constitution in some fundamental sense, then sue them. So, and that's what happens, right? If if a if a city if a city is too restrictive on gun control, right? More restrictive than people believe the Constitution demands, and you can sue the government. So, if if these sanctuary cities are doing something that's clearly non-constitutional against federal law to such an extent that then the government would sue, then the federal government would sue them. And the fact that the federal government is not suing these, although I think there are some cases in the courts, um, suggests that most of these, most of the cases, either the federal government doesn't feel strongly enough about these issues or the states, the counties, the cities are within their rights to decide how to allocate police hours and how what separation of powers yeah. what regulations of ice to abide by and what regulations of ice not to abide by uh separation of powers exactly and you know i don't know all the intricacies of this and how it all works out but it strikes me that if a city or a state flaunts violates uh, federal law then the federal government has recourse against it. And right. But then the only time that I would, you know, advocate for that is if I think that the state is doing something against the principle of individual rights. So for example, where we have had states that have legalized um, assisted suicide, right? So Oregon is one of the early ones that have allowed legal assisted suicide. And then you have um, at least, I think, I don't know if it was Sessions was doing this or not, you know, they were going to go after them from the federal government. I would be against that. You know, you would never, so it's, yeah, the, the federal government might try, but I would only support it. And I wouldn't support the federal government going after sanctuary cities. Yeah, no, I wouldn't support yeah. them either. I don't think sanctuary cities are doing anything to violate individual rights. Right. And, uh, you know, vote the bastards out. If you you know, get it, the, my whole thinking about immigration is whenever the government is doing something, you want its actions to be guided by the principle of individual rights. And that includes immigration policy of every kind. And so whatever the government, is, whatever the government does to act in that realm, it's got to be guided by that principle. Are the individuals who are coming over the border, are they a threat to individual rights. If so, the government has a proper role. If not, not. Yeah. And you know, you giving them a quiz on their ideology or you know any of these other things that don't talk about actual concrete physical actions that they've taken that show that they're a threat or something about them like contagious disease thing that show that they're a threat. Government doesn't have a role. 